Hello, and welcome to the Curiosity and Consciousness podcast. The intention of this podcast is to open your mind, get curious about yourself, and connect to the power you hold within. I am your host, Karen Maloney, an inside out coach helping you to believe in yourself and manifest your desires. Check out the podcast available on all platforms and go to my website, www.karenmaloney.com for all info. Hello, welcome everybody. It's me, Karen Maloney, and thanks for joining for another episode. And this is another incredible episode in the cancer series. And joining me this week is Diane Four. And Diane is an attorney, an advanced Eden energy medicine practitioner, and an inner source faculty member. She has an energy medicine practice in Maryland and Massachusetts, where she specializes in grid work and helping cancer patients manage their treatment side effects. Diane was honored to join Donna Eden of Eden Energy Medicine on the Gaia Network's Healing Matrix with Sue Mortar, where she shared her story of how the Eden Method helped resolve her many chronic health issues. From 2017 to 2020, Diane was on the medical staff at CHI Healthcare, a large primary care integrative health practice in Maryland. While there, she designed and taught dozens of Eden Energy Medicine classes on a wide range of topics, including pain, stress and weight management. She has taught Eden Energy Medicine pain management techniques to the medical staff and patients at the Johns Hopkins Breast Cancer Center in Baltimore, Maryland. She is also a licensed massage therapist, certified energy psychology practitioner, life coach and Reiki master. She is also trained in cranial sacral therapy, somatic experiencing and tong rong healing. In 2021, Diane was diagnosed with inflammatory breast cancer, an extremely rare cancer. And because of its aggressiveness, Diane had to undergo chemotherapy, surgery and radiation treatment. She used her energy medicine tools to help her body deal with the side effects and transition from one treatment to the next and recover from her ordeal. She is currently writing a book to help other cancer patients in their journey with the tools of Eden Energy Medicine. The book will be out later this year and the current working title is Cancer and Energy Medicine, Managing Chemotherapy, Surgery and Radiation with the Help of Energy Medicine. Again, this is a really interesting conversation and Diane obviously talks about Eden Energy Medicine In this episode, as she is an advanced practitioner and it has supported her so much, but actually her background was as an attorney and her son, when he was just eight years old, had leukemia. And because he was in so much pain, was in a wheelchair and really went through a a really tough time, she learned reflexology to be able to work on his feet to help relieve some of his pain and it worked but everything took a toll on her own health and she developed many chronic issues including skin lupus, connective tissue disease and many chronic issues and at times she was in horrendous pain and couldn't walk and couldn't work and she was allergic to medications so she had to look for other options as well and Eden Energy Medicine came across her path and she talks about how the Eden Method had actually helped her to heal a lot of her chronic issues. And then in 2021, she was diagnosed with a form of breast cancer that was very aggressive. And again, it took a huge toll on her health and she had to do chemo and radiation and surgery. But then she used her energy medicine, which was a constant throughout her recovery, as well as other modalities. But she talks about the daily energy routine, tracing triple warmer meridian backwards, using various acupressure points in the body, and doing temporal lobe tapping, as well as homolateral repattering. 
And lots of these things you may not have heard of, maybe you have, these are all from the Eden Energy Medicine Method. But if you go onto YouTube and put in Donna Eden, who is the founder, you will find all these videos. But I will link a video for the daily energy routine, the homolateral repattering and the temporal lobe tapping on the show notes as well. So you can see those videos and do those routines as well if you wish. But Diane talks about how they supported her and she also spoke about how recovery is the hardest part sometimes and that's where a lot of people can get PTSD or get depressed because you find this will and this battle for the treatment and then you kind of crash and that's a place where energy medicine and being conscious of how we talk to ourselves can be really supportive. Diane is also writing a book that will be out later this year. So keep an eye out for that. And if you want to learn more on Diane's work, you can go to her website www.edenenergyworks.com. That's E-D-E-N Energy Works, W-O-R-K-S dot com. And as always, I will have all those links her website and her email on the show notes on my website, karenmaloney.com and click the podcast section. Enjoy. Welcome, Diane, and thank you so much for joining today. And I'm excited to connect with you and hear all about your, your journey and your work. So thank you, first of all, for coming to join and share today. You're so welcome. I'm really happy to be here. Amazing. And maybe if you just give us a little introduction to yourself, first of all, before we, we delve more into your, your work and your journey. Sure. So I'm an advanced Eden Energy Medicine practitioner, and I'm on faculty at InnerSource. I teach uh, first-year students. Um, I'm also a guest faculty for year two. I also do e- mm-hmm. um, energy psychology work as well. And I have practice in Maryland and practice in Massachusetts, the United States. So, um, so that's kind of where mm-hmm. I put my effort the last decade or so. I love it. And what brought you to this work? Ooh, that's a really loaded question. So um, <laughs> <laughs> how far back do you want me to go? So um, we're talking about cancer today. So I'll share a little mm-hmm. bit um, going back in, in my, my history. My son was diagnosed with leukemia when he was eight years old. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. so he actually went through chemo, um, but he relapsed while he was on chemo. So um, he uh, actually needed to have a stem cell transplant. Um, And during that time that he was going through chemo, I knew a little bit about, you know, alternative types of things, but um, I really wasn't trained in any of those things. I'm actually an attorney by training. Um, And Mm -hmm. so I was pretty desperate because he was having so many side effects from the medication that he was actually in a wheelchair. He was unable to, to walk and he was in so much pain. Um, and so I started to study reflexology because I was actually living in the hospital with him while he was being treated. And so every night when he was having so much pain, I would just massage his feet and do reflexology on his feet. So that's sort of my first introduction to both cancer and energy medicine type things. Um, and then um, my health is not always that great. Uh, and as I became older and having just kind of gone through the stress of he's, he's alive today. I should say he's, um, he's doing well. He had a stem cell transplant. His sister was his donor. So she basically saved his life. Um, he's doing great today. You never know that he went through that. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. But it took its toll on my own Mm -hmm. health. So as I got into my fifties, I started to develop, lots of different autoimmune issues. Mm -hmm. So I um, had uh, rheumatoid arthritis, skin lupus, and connective tissue disease. At least these were the things that I was um, diagnosed with. Um, And so I was uh, also allergic to medication. I happened to be married Mm -hmm. to a doctor um, and had sort of tried lots of different uh, Western medical approaches to my health issues and nothing was working. And I was becoming allergic to the medications. 
And so I needed to find something uh, that was going to be something I could do for myself uh, that wouldn't require medication. Mm -hmm. And that's how I happened upon Donna Eden. Um, So that's how I ended up getting into the energy medicine work directly. Love it. And I love Donna as well. She's an inspiration in Eden Energy Medicine. And maybe if you just talk about the energy medicine in the first place and how when you came across it, it supported you as well initially with those those chronic issues that were going on. Absolutely. So um, because of the rheumatoid arthritis, I literally couldn't walk up steps. Mm. Uh, Because of the skin lupus, I couldn't take medications. Uh, Because of the connective tissue disease, I had pain everywhere and inflammation throughout my body. Um, And so I wasn't able to work. I wasn't able to practice law. Um, And so my job full time ended up becoming trying to find cures for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, But when I happened upon Donna's work, um, I went to a conference in New Jersey one weekend. Oh, and I had chronic back pain. I had lots of other issues like you know, chronic sinusitis. My, I used to call my husband mm-hmm. the carrier because I would get sick with whatever he had brought home from the office that day. Mm-hmm. So um, I was a bit of a mess. Um, and so when I went to her weekend workshop in New Jersey, I found the way to get rid of my back pain, which was amazing because I had back surgery that was unsuccessful. Mm-hmm. So I was very intrigued with what she was doing but never, ever intended to, you know, practice, you know, energy yeah. medicine. I just wanted to go back to work as an attorney. Mm-hmm. So I went back and forth. This is about 13, 14 years ago. I went back and forth for two years when she was teaching in Phoenix at the time mm-hmm. and, and just went through the two-year program and felt better. The more I did the exercises, the better I felt. So most, if not all, of my chronic issues had begun to resolve themselves. And I was able to go back to work as an attorney, but never really intended to practice. And, you know, one thing led to another. My husband would come to me and say, you know, I've got this patient and we've tried everything. We've done all the tests and no one knows what to do. Would you at least see this person? And so very reluctantly, I started Mm -hmm. to, you know, see one client. And then, you know, after my my day at the law firm, you know. And um, so that's how I started very slowly and I eventually went to, uh, I decided I wanted to, you know, have some kind of a license, a legal license in order to, to do the hands on mm-hmm. the body work. And so I ended up doing massage therapy while I was, you know, I was going to massage school in the morning and going to my law firm in the afternoon. So I did that for a few years and eventually mm-hmm. made the shift so that I could work doing this work full time and never really looked back. It's been, it's been wonderful. That is amazing. And, you know, it's it's the truth of sometimes when we're forced into a corner, we have to, you know, open up to other things and kind of look outside the box and see what might be there to support us. And Donna's own story of how energy medicine and how why she created it in the first place and how it helped her heal her from so many of her issues as well. It's it's incredible. And I myself have done the foundations in Eden Energy Medicine. So what are some of the techniques? And again, people may not understand them, but Mm. what kind of things were you doing on yourself? Um, oh gosh. Yeah. Well, there's, there, yeah, there's so many things that you could do. There's something that Donna created called the daily energy routine. Um, and there are, and so she created that technique to help people do something that was super easy. They could do it without having to think about, you know, what is it that I'm doing with respect to the energy medicine um, systems, because there are nine energy Mm -hmm. medicine systems in and around the body, as you know. So those very simple exercises will start to bring those energy systems back into balance. Um, So something as simple as doing that twice a day already started to address many of my issues. And and honestly, in my case, the biggest issue for me was that my my auric field or my bio field wasn't protecting me. And so um, if you're not familiar, people are not familiar with that term, the aura is is something that should be extending out in every direction from the body, 360 degrees. The best analogy that I use is the the atmosphere of the earth. So the earth has an atmosphere and that atmosphere protects it. It's the same thing with our body. So the auric field should be protecting it. And so that was why I was getting sick often was because my field was really not strong enough. That's just one example. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> I could share, I could, you know, teach a whole class on this. Um, oh, yeah. 
Yeah. So in the case of like my allergies, for example, in, um, in Eden Energy Medicine, we learn and understand there's a relationship between meridians in the body and how those impact the health. So mm-hmm. in the case of allergies, for example, that, that condition involves two meridians called, one is called triple warmer or triple heater, and the other is called spleen meridian. So if those meridians that govern the immune system are out of balance, that relationship of yin and yang is out of balance, then the body's going to reflect that in things like allergies and weak uh, physical weaknesses, you know, susceptibility to colds, that sort of thing. So I had, once I started to understand that if I could bring those two meridians back into balance, then my body didn't need to have that allergic response. And in my case, I was very desperate because I couldn't take allergy medicines. I was allergic to them. So I lived in Washington, Mm -hmm. D.C. at the time. And every spring from March to May, I was miserable because of these allergies. And I did something very, very simple. I just started to trace the triple warmer meridian backwards every time I had an allergic Mm -hmm. symptom. It didn't matter if it was watery eyes or, you know, scratchy throat. I just very quietly and calmly traced that triple warmer backwards. And by doing that, I was allowing the body to not have to go into fight or flight allergic response. And that was a, a game changer for me. Wow. And um, yeah, I love it. You know, I love how working and learning about the body, because I always say as well, you know, our body is the most incredible piece of technology and intelligence that we will ever have. But we don't really know anything about it and how it works and how we can support ourselves, really. So learning lots of different modalities, I find really interesting anyway, in how we can support ourselves. And I know you work with cancer patients as well. But What's your understanding, first of all, of cancer and what's going on in the body? From an energy medicine perspective. um, So, yeah, Donna teaches a whole class on cancer. um, And what she describes is she calls it the cancer cell signal. um, And she teaches that there's a signal that goes out into the body within the body, there's just like a, almost like a beep. Let's just imagine you've got this cell, it's got a positive and negative charge. And then once that cancer cell starts to multiply, it's like an antenna that's sending out a signal to Mm -hmm. the other parts of the the body. And so um, the key is to be able to allow, uh, to to, to be able to reverse that signal that's happening in the body. And she actually uh, explains in her class that if and when a person has had a surgery, for example, for cancer, a tumor, for example, there's a, that's the one time that you can easily stop that cancer signal from multiplying because the, the tumor has been removed. So, um, so it's a whole, and, the, and again, cancer in the body always comes back to this relationship between triple warmer and spleen on a much mm-hmm. deeper level. And they're also the other part of the body that's very, the other part of the nine energy systems that's intricately involved with cancer is the electrical system. And that is because there's an electrical component to cancer because each cell has a positive and negative charge. Um, and more and more of the research actually in terms of alternative approaches to cancer is pointing in the direction of this electrical aspect of cancer. So that's another way that you can address it through energy medicine. Wow. So what does that look like for the average person? The electrical aspect? Yeah. Well, there's actually a protocol that we use in, in Eden Energy Medicine. So for example, um, I, I did specialize in treating uh, cancer clients once I um, was practicing full time uh, because of my son's experience. And, um, and I would use a technique that we call um, using working with the main electrics in the body um, Mm -hmm. and holding those points. And so it's tap, it's sort of tapping into that electrical system, which, as I said, is one of the nine energy systems. And when you hold those points on the body, it will start to change whatever cells, whatever polarities have been reversed or in some way imbalanced. And so you can do that um, on another person. So for example, I would teach a caregiver what to do for the cancer patient um, so mm-hmm. they could start to you know, bring balance within that electrical system. Wow. So interesting. And 
Well, after your son's journey, you mentioned you looked more into it and started working with patients. So how else do you support them as well if someone with cancer comes to see you? So there are a couple different ways to approach it. One is to work is to work one on one with the client who's going, who's the cancer patient. And the other is to work with um, a family member or caregiver, someone that has time. Mm -hmm. Um, And so prior to my getting cancer, Mm -hmm. I would work with um, usually like a couple or um, an individual and teaching them things that they could do to bring that, that triple warmer spleen back into the balance. So the immune system could be strong enough to handle what it was going to go through. So there are very simple things that uh, one can do to prepare the body in order to, for example, receive chemotherapy. So um, when the body, so, so any kind of quote unquote attack on the body, whether it's a chemotherapy or a surgery or a radiation, the body is going to react as if that's an attack on it because that's the way mm-hmm. that the back brain, the limbic system of the brain is going to perceive that. So a very simple thing that I can teach my clients is how to prepare the body for whatever that is going to come its way. So there are things that you can do to uh, to teach the body or to help the body to counteract the side effects or to be able to digest, so to speak, what is coming its way. And that can be very effective. Wow. And what has been your own cancer journey as well? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, as I say, I, I worked with a lot of cancer patients and I was um, lucky enough to be able to teach um cancer patients at Johns Hopkins uh, mm-hmm. Breast Cancer Center uh, a couple years ago, several years ago now. And um, there was a simple protocol that I taught uh, both the patients, the staff, and the caregivers. I haven't mentioned it yet, but it's an acupressure technique that you can do on an individual while they're getting chemotherapy or after they're getting chemotherapy. Mm-hmm. And um, this particular protocol has been done demonstrated in a study out of uh, Dana Farber, I think. Yes, Dana Farber, um, that proves that the vast majority, if not all, of patients who are receiving this particular treatment while they're getting chemotherapy have left net, left na- left, excuse me, less nausea, anxiety, and pain. Mm-hmm. So this was the technique that I was teaching. Uh, to patients. But then uh, back, let's see, in July of 2021, um, I developed um, an inflammation on my right breast that I thought was mastitis Mm -hmm. and was diagnosed as mastitis and um, and went on some antibiotics, uh, but it didn't go away. And then a month later, uh, they did a biopsy and discovered it was something called inflammatory breast cancer. And inflammatory breast cancer is an extremely rare, aggressive breast cancer. It's actually a combination of um, a skin and lymphat- a lymphatic cancer that happens to show up in the breast. And um, it's, it's something that you can't wait on. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's something that has to be addressed with chemo surgery and radiation. Mm -hmm. So I started um, chemo in August of that same year. And then as soon as you finish the chemo, you go right into surgery. So I had surgery in December. As soon as you're done the the surgery, you go right into radiation. So I finished radiation in March of last year. And uh, what was in addition to that being a very difficult journey, because mm-hmm. of my history of autoimmune, um, I again became allergic to the medications. Mm-hmm. Um, and in some ways, the lupus was the, the biggest uh, difficulty for me uh, because of my, my own underlying uh, autoimmune issues that, that had been really resolved with energy medicine. But because I was getting mm-hmm. pumped with chemotherapy, then I, there was really, mm-hmm. it, it started to come back to the surface again. So it was, that was, that was a, a, wow. a difficult part of the journey. Wow. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I couldn't imagine the journey. I mean, my dad in his journey as well, he he had all those as well. And I would love to have known more information to support him 
through yeah. those as well because you know the side effects can be a bit rough and even mentally and emotionally you know yes. it's, a, it's a lot to go through yes. so what helped you as well on your journey obviously you've the energy medicine but what yes. what kind of things in particular helped you um, so with respect, I did many things in addition to energy mm -hmm. medicine, but energy medicine was always sort of the fundamental mm -hmm. aspect. Like if I needed to get my, you know, my basis, my foundation in order. And so that's where energy medicine came in for me. Um, and I, I, I should add one more part to this story mm -hmm. is that it's not just the chemo surgery radiation. It's also the recovery. Mm -hmm. And this is where a lot of people get tripped up. Because, you know, they rise to the occasion to fight the battle that they need to do mm -hmm. to save their lives. And then they crash afterwards or they, you know, they have PTSD or they're getting depressed mm -hmm. or they're not healing or they're getting the chronic side effects, you know, the long term side effects, you know. So that's another very mm -hmm. important part of cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say kind of the overarching theme harkens back to what I had said previously a little bit. And that is, you know. Working with your body, having a relationship with your body, communicating with your body, understanding that that energy system that governs fight or flight, it's not you, it's just mm -hmm. a part of you. And when you mm -hmm. understand that it's just a part of me, then that creates space. That allows for me to work with it. That allows for me not to be kind of overtaken by it. And so I only had, you know, considering all that I went through, I only had a couple of times where I kind of fell mm -hmm. off the, you know, over, was overwhelmed in the sense mm -hmm. that my, I, it was just too much, but I could always come mm -hmm. back to that fundamental thing, that fundamental principle that it's my energy system and it's not me and I can work with that. Mm -hmm. So whenever I had mm -hmm. something that was being thrown at me, then I could have a conversation with my body. I'm like, okay, this is what we're going to deal with. This is what we have to get overcome. And how are we going to do that? And so it was almost like a team approach. And I think that's mm -hmm. what really helped me the most get through and bounce back from everything. That's amazing. And I think it's so important as well to have that communication, no matter how difficult it is, but to come on side and, you know, like that be a team as opposed to maybe feel like a victim or my body's given up on me or why yes. is this happening to me, which yes. obviously is very normal as well. And there's a yes. lot of emotions that come yes. up and they need to be processed. Yes. But I love that being in communication as well. And just, you know, what does that look like? Maybe for someone who, and I know you mentioned a couple of things, but for someone who maybe just that seems like such an alien concept, yes. what are some kind of things that they could say to themselves as they're going through treatment or like that when you mentioned in that recovery phase as well afterwards? Yes. So I just want to go back to something you mm -hmm. said prior to this question. Um, the depression, the mm -hmm. feeling overwhelmed, all of those emotions that you go through, all of that is all, there's also an energy component to that. Mm -hmm. And in terms of what we call that in energy medicine, it's called homolateral. Homolateral, what you know what that means, but I'll define it. Homolateral yeah. means that there's a breakdown in the communication between the right and the left hemispheres of the brain. So when the body gets under stress, when the body perceives that there's a stressor, and this is the ultimate stressor, it's going to go back into a default pattern to protect itself. And that default pattern is where there's an, a lack of communication between the right and the left hemispheres. And there's mm -hmm. not that cross communication. When that cross communication starts to break down, we tend to feel overwhelmed. We tend to feel depressed. We tend to feel like a victim. And so when you understand, when you feel like that, and you understand, again, this is not me. This is a part of me. This is mm -hmm. something I can change. So I would do a lot of working with the homolateral energy. Sometimes, mm -hmm. like when I went through radiation, every time I went through radiation, I would go homolateral every single day. Mm -hmm. So it's a challenge to get out of that. So if you find that you're going down that path, understand that you can shift that. The other thing that helped me a lot 
with processing of the emotions was EFT, emotional freedom mm-hmm. technique. So that's something that's super easy, super simple. Um, I would, you know, when the anxiety would start to come up mm-hmm. prior to going to chemo, let's say, because you know the next round is coming, I could tap on different parts of my body and I could start to bring down those emotions. That was very, mm-hmm. very helpful. Um, and I, I know that without that, and I know from reading all the cancer websites that many, many people are overwhelmed. They're on antidepressants. They're on anti-anxiety. Mm-hmm. They have panic attacks before they're going into their chemo. Mm-hmm. And I, and actually that was, that was how I decided to write the book was because um, it was during my second uh, chemo phase. And I had done, I had this whole ritual that I would do of preparing my body to, to mm-hmm. go through the, the chemotherapy. And I had a woman across and they were all in one big, large room. And there was a woman across from me who seemed to be fine. She and I were on the same treatment, the same drug, everything. She was a little bit ahead of me in terms of time. Mm -hmm. And after about 15 minutes in the room getting her infusion, she went into anaphylactic shock and they had to Mm -hmm. wheel her out and, you know, try to resuscitate her. And then the woman next to me started vomiting uncontrollably. And the nurse came in and said, there's nothing we can do for you. We've given you all the medication we can give you. And she just, you know, continued vomiting. I'm like, oh my gosh, like there are so many simple things that people could do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the things is that EFT. One of the things is working with the triple warmer in the, in the, the stress response. Triple warmer is another way of saying stress response in the body and tapping on that meridian. So tapping on that meridian and giving it a new message. Uh, it's something called temporal tapping. And so just working with the right and the left hemisphere of the brain, all these things are subtle, but can be very dramatic in terms of how they can help you. I love that. And again, you know, EFT is a powerful tool as well, because it is working on the body's meridians and we can express exactly how we're feeling or what's coming up for us. And like you say, help release some of that in the moment. And we had Brad Yates join us before in the podcast talking all about tapping. There are so many videos as well on YouTube that can be for anything. So it's a really powerful tool as well. And then just to dip back for a second to that communication piece and what kind of things people can can say to their body as well as they're going through or how they can maybe change the communication from being against and this applies across the board as a lot of the information does to change that relationship with ourselves when we're going through something like cancer or any kind of illness in the body coming out of victimhood to being more supportive yes so as I mentioned, doing the homolateral exercises, which you also can find on YouTube, very simple to find. You're just going to look for homo, you do energy medicine or Donna Eden and homolateral correction. Um, and that's, that's critical because if you, if your energies are homo, homolateral, none of the other energy work that you're going to do, like the daily energy routine is necessarily going to hold. So mm-hmm. you want to make sure to get your body out of homolateral. And the other thing that I used that's super easy is the temporal tapping, which is similar to EFT, but uh, basically you're working with the, with the triple warmer meridian and the right and the left sides of the brain. Mm -hmm. And so you're, so for example, now, I mean, I I think the people, what people struggle with also at the end of this whole process is, you know, is my body going to fail me again? Am Mm -hmm. I going to, am I going to have a recurrence? And so when we, when we go there, we go into a, you know, a state of fear. And so you know, the back brain, when we work with the back brain, the limbic system of the brain, it's not very smart. And the prefrontal cortex is the intelligence. And so what we want to do is we want to get to that that back brain. And when we tap on triple warmer meridian, we're communicating with that back brain. And that, that limbic system back brain it will, it's almost like a computer program. If you program it, it's just going to follow. So but it also governs fight or flight. So it's a very kind of dicey combination. But if you use, so what I did was I used something simple like temporal tapping to give my brain a different message, almost like giving it directions. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, now, instead of going into that fear of, oh my gosh, can the cancer come back? I can tap something. So for example, you're going to start tapping a positive statement on the right side because that's the right hemisphere and a, and a positive statement with a negative word on the left side. And the reason for that is that the left hemisphere is the more critical analytical part of the brain. So what you want to do is kind of trick it. 
And so that, that way it doesn't question what it is that you're, that you're programming into it. So for example, you know, rather than going to the fear of becoming, I can say something very simple and tap that starting at my temple, going behind my ear, my body knows how to heal itself beautifully. Something that resonates with, with me, what, what's going to inspire me. And I'll just tap that five or six times, starting at the temple, going behind the ear. And then on the left side, and I want to say it out loud so that my body, every, everybody hears it. And then on the left side, it's basically the same sentence with a negative word put in there. So for example, my body has no problem healing itself beautifully. And so that negative allows the left brain to be satisfied as well. And so I'm giving it like a double message and giving it the instruction for the immune system to to follow my direction. Um, And so that's something that, and you can use that for anything. It's just a super simple, quick trick that you can use. Yeah, powerful. And that's what we need as well, kind of easy, simple tricks and tools, but yet powerful that can support us in any place at any time, any day, any moment. Um, But it's kind of building up these things to have them as go-tos, as opposed to trying to, you know, figure it out in the moment. Um, Yeah. And I love all that that you've shared. And even just talking a little bit more about your book and what you're, you're sharing in there as well. Yes. So I'm in the middle of writing a book about my experience. Mm. And mm. my first, the first half is about my journey. Um, you know, what, what I went through in going mm. through the chemo surgery radiation. And then the second half is going to be what were the energy medicine tools that helped me through each aspect of those journeys. So those treatments. So um, some of the things were consistent across the board. So for example, you know, staying out of homolateral, working mm-hmm. with the triple warmer energy systems, that was that was going to be a constant. But then some things were uh, were more important, you know, in, in my surgical side, for example, you know, working with the healing of the body itself because of scar tissue, for example. Um, So that was a more hands-on kind of treatment. And then the radiation was involving something more in the field. So, so I'm going to break that down and be able to give people simple tips that they can use. And then I, I, I will also have a part where if you are lucky enough to either have a practitioner nearby or a loved, a loved one that can work with you, there are a number of other protocols that one could have someone work with you, and that can be very, very powerful. I've had a lot of clients in the past um, who did very, very well in their cancer treatment because I was because they had someone doing the energy medicine for them. It's very difficult when you're a patient to work on yourself. Yeah. So yeah, especially yeah, if you're going through those feelings of overwhelm and exhaustion and all kinds of different bits. Yeah. Um, yeah. Having someone nearby would be amazing. And you also talk about grid work. Yes. And what is grid work when it comes to helping cancer patients as well? Wow. So yeah, another big question. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the nine energy systems in the body uh, is called the major grids. And the major mm-hmm. grids are are sort of the infrastructure of the energy body. So if you think of someone building a building, so before they put up the walls and the windows and so forth, they've got that structural, the steel structure, the wood structure. That's what the grid is to the energy body. Mm-hmm. And so there are four grids on the front. There are four grids on the back of the body. And if a major grid has a break in it, then it's difficult for the, it's almost like um, the best analogy is someone that has like a a car that needs a front on alignment. You can still Mm -hmm. drive that car, but you're having to constantly compensate for Mm -hmm. the fact that it's being pulled in a certain direction. So energetically, that's what happens when a grid is out. Mm -hmm. So um, a, a trauma can cause a grid to go out. Um, An illness can cause a grid to go out. As a matter of fact, I did a grid session because the cancer broke a grid for me. The diagnosis Mm -hmm. broke a grid. So, um, so the grid is, is something that uh, is more advanced energy type work. But if you can connect up those grids that are broken, it really allows the body to heal itself better. And it's a big part of the reason why sometimes it's hard for people to heal, whether it's emotional healing, psychological healing, physical healing, oftentimes the the support is just not there. So this is why grid work is really important. 
Amazing. Yes, I didn't know if it was part of the kind of energy medicine as well or if it was something something different. And how are you doing now in your own journey? How where where are you at or what's what's going on for you? Yeah, so I'm in the so when I'm in the middle of writing this book, I'm reliving my journey. So mm. it's been, it's been an emotional experience because mm. you know I kept a journal throughout uh, the entire time, and so now I'm going back and you know pulling things together. And mm. you forget things if you you know if you don't write it down, especially with chemo brain, you forget things. So um, so it's been an interesting another kind of a roller coaster experience mm-hmm. just going through and reliving it again. Um, and yet it's really been cathartic at the same mm-hmm. time to be able to, to put it all on paper. Um, and that's really helpful. And I, I should say I did 17 different modalities during this whole experience and, mm-hmm. and I would encourage people to do whatever it is. There mm-hmm. are so many modalities out there that they can use that can help them through this journey. Um, mm-hmm. And so right now, uh, my big, so my biggest concern, having worked with, um, I worked, you know, in an integrated healthcare facility for three years, and um, also, you know, my own private practice. I, I was the person that was kind of working with the, you know, the patients or the clients who had these long-term side effects, and so I was very aware going into the the entire process that I didn't want to be, my, my, my goal was to not have to be on medication for the rest of my life uh, because Mm -hmm. of this history that I have. And so that was sort of the framework that I used to approach all my various, you know, treatments. And that was very challenging because I did have, you know, quite a few side effects and not knowing, well, is that going to be something that stays with me forever, you know? And so right now I'm at the point, you know, I'm on the other side of that. I'm not on any medications. Um, and the side effects that I did have seem to have gone away. So, you know, I'm really happy about that. The only thing that I still have is a low uh, white count and I've developed something called macrocytosis, which is an enlarged red blood cell. Um, and that is those two um, side effects are from the chemo. And I ended my last chemo in October. So hopefully I will be able to build up those red blood cells again. But consequently, I have three grandchildren and whatever mm. colds or illnesses they get, I've gotten that. So I've had lots of colds for the last yeah. you know, six months or so. But I'm using, you know, that same tapping that I just talked mm-hmm. about earlier, just telling my body, my body knows how to make healthy new red blood cells. My mm-hmm. body has no problem making healthy new blood red cells, you know, so or white cells. And so just you know, reprogramming the body because the body is when it's getting this chemo, the, it's getting a message. Mm-hmm. And so it's getting, it's taking on that information that the chemo is giving it. And so the body is just responding to that. So again, it's a, it's like you said, the body is just so incredible and in how, you know, brilliant it is. Mm-hmm. But now we want to, you know, to get a different message. We wanted mm-hmm. to get a new message. And so that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. And just, you know, uh, healing myself in every, you know, many different aspects, my diet, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. And um, I mean, you, you sound like you're, you're thriving and you've definitely hit a, a good space, but like that, it, it it's not an instant overnight solution or recovery. You know, it is a, a long drawn out process sometimes. And I know sometimes we can, we can feel like, oh, look, let me just get back to my life. I'll just get back to who I was and let's just forget about this. But you know, it's, right. it's being patient and compassionate with ourselves as well. And knowing that it's okay if it takes some time because, yes. you know, that's what the body needs at that time. Um, Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And also, I think a lot of people lose themselves in the process. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're going through something like that, you you lose sight of, well, who was I? I just want to be who I was before. And when you're in the middle of that, you don't know if you're going to come out on the other side who you were before. Um, and, you know, I think that's the best message to give to people is to understand that it's temporary mm-hmm. and that if, you know, if they, you know, if they were able to be patient, as you said, do, you know, they might have to adjust things in their lives and may have to do things differently, but they, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they have wiggle room, they have things that they can do. And eventually, eventually the body is designed to heal itself. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think that's such an empowering message as well to share. And as someone who has gone through it and still getting through the the last effects, you know, it's taking that that message on board as well. Um, and just curiously, what what have you seen some of the benefits and the results from your time working in the Integrative Healthcare Centre and the John Hopkins um, Hospital as well? And even from your own son when you started the reflexology, what were some of the, the benefits and results that you've seen? Well, in the case of my son, um, he was in tremendous pain from a medication called Vincristin, which creates something called foot drop. And essentially, you can't move your foot and, and walk. Um, and he would have shooting pain up into his legs. And so I would just sit at his bed every night and do reflexology on his feet, massaging all the different nerve endings that correspond to different parts of the body. And that was what allowed him to walk. You know, he was able to then be able to go to sleep. He wasn't in pain. He was able to, and once he, you know, got through the medication, he was able to walk again. As a matter of fact, now he's like a professional ballroom dancer. You'd never know oh, that wow. he went through that. You know, it's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. His story, his story is pretty amazing too. Um, mm-hmm. And then in terms of my um, experience in the integrative healthcare, I was, I mean, I had some people, some patients that were, you know, cancer patients, but I think the, the joy that when I think back on that experience, well, first of all, the, the, the beauty of that kind of a setup, we were integrative primary care and we had, you know, peace, you know, regular primary care physicians. We had acupuncturists, we had massage, we had nutrition, we had everything. And it was, you know, when there was, when the patient was treated as a team, those were the patients that did the best. Like everybody would just kind of share what it was that their modality would do for that patient. Um, but in terms of the energy medicine piece, you know, the t- two things, my takeaway from that experience was I, you know, I had, you know, several clients that when I first met them were walking with canes and now they're cane free. I mean, that, mm-hmm. that was, you know, that's just a wonderful thing to see. I also have, or, you know, I have had cl- patients at that particular location who are on medication for things like anxiety, depression, who are not only now, uh, medication free, they're actually went on to become energy medicine practitioners. So um, they went through the training, turned their lives around, and now they're, they're healing others. So that's very rewarding. Um, and then uh, you asked me about John yeah. Hopkins, I think. So yeah, so Johns Hopkins, um, that was a, a class that I taught twice. Um, and what was really interesting there was um, the relationship between the medical staff. The medical staff was created this integrative um, teaching series. And so every week they brought in a different modality to teach to the patients, cancer patients, Mm -hmm. because most of the staff there are actually uh, survivors themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was very interesting. They're very committed to the patients. And so, at the, but at the time, like I could see these were the young women. It was a young women's breast cancer um, consortium, the, the uh, class that I was teaching. And that I think was what really struck me the most is this, as you said, this sense of, you know, grief, you know, so mm-hmm. much loss, so much grief, you know, why did my body betray me? And, you know, you know, wh- why did this happen to me? I mean, it's just a normal question mm-hmm. to ask. Um and just, you know, what, you know, just observing that and not, not understanding that, you know, this is something that it's something that I can work with. I think that's, mm-hmm. I think people feel like I have to just follow whatever is done, whatever is being prescribed to me or being done to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and you do e- easily turn into that victim. And so when you start to explore these other modalities, it empowers you. Mm-hmm. It empowers you to be able to have a have a, a bit of control and a bit of say in what's going to happen to your mm-hmm. body and so i think that's that and also when you're a caretaker or a loved one you feel so powerless like what can i do mm-hmm. to help you know i really want to help i would do anything and so it was just so rewarding to be able to teach you know the loved one how what this protocol was that they could do at home and you know i i have some patients or some clients that you know, the loved one to this day is still doing those protocols. I have mm-hmm. one woman who every night she figure eights her husband for a half an hour mm-hmm. and he, and like, he's doing great. You know, it's yeah. like just little things like that make a huge difference. 
I love that. And again, I think, you know, some of the most inspiring people across all walks of life are the ones who have come out the other side of whatever they were facing and, you know, sharing with others as well that there is possibilities and it is possible and sharing some some tools and techniques as well that that can support so i i love that and i think you know the integrative approach is probably the best as well you know because like you say there's so much that we can do for ourselves as well in the midst of maybe feeling powerless and going through all these things so i really thank you for joining and sharing today Diane and please if there's anything that you feel called left to share please do and please also share where people can find out more on your work yes so the uh, best way to reach me would either be through my website which is www.edenenergyworks so that's e d e n e n e r g y w o r k s dot com or you could email me which is j e d i so jedi and the same as the last name for j e d i f a u r e at gmail dot com mm-hmm. um i do work with clients online and i work with them in person i have a practice in massachusetts and a practice in maryland and what i would s- encourage people is even if you don't have a, ideally you would have an energy medicine practitioner working on you mm-hmm. while you're going through your process. Why? Because as I mentioned before, everything that is happening in your cancer treatment, the chemo, the surgery, the radiation, the body perceives as an, that as an attack. Mm-hmm. And what is so important is to have some kind of hands-on work that counteracts that attack so that the body feels safe, so that the body feels cared for, so that the body can be prepared for the next onslaught that's coming at it. So if that means massage, get massage. If that means acupuncture, do something alternative that is healing the body to counteract those side effects. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important. If you're lucky Mm -hmm. enough to live in an area where there's an energy medicine practitioner, I highly recommend that you make a connection with them and how they can be so helpful to help you deal with the whole process that you're going to be going through. So that's the only other thing that I'd like to say. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. And again, I will link, I will share the links to your website and your email as well on the show notes on my website. And I may even do a quick Google. I know Donna has the daily energy routine on YouTube as well. So I might just link that as well for anyone who's interested. But thank you so, so much, Diane. And I wish you all the best. And we look forward to your book as well. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for listening. And before you go, I would love to ask you a massive favor. If you enjoyed this episode or any episode of the podcast, I would love for you to leave a short review on Apple Podcasts to help it grow. If you could do that, I would greatly appreciate it.